Wars and current occurring uh, in various parts of the world, leading to the destruction and distortion of human lives. The Armenian people experienced such devastation during the 2020 Karabakh War. This report uh, not only recounts my personal experience during that time, but also reflects the collective experience of an entire population, which I was not only uh, witnessed, uh, but participated in. To begin, I would like to briefly discuss the Karabakh conflict. Um, the parliament of Nagorno-Karabakh had voted in favor of uniting with Armenia and the referendum boycotted by the population of Nagorno-Karabakh was held. In the referendum, a majority voted in favor of independence. The demand to unification with Armenia started uh, peacefully in uh, 1988, but as the Soviet Union disintegrated, it escalated into a violent conflict between, between Armenians and Azerbaijans. This conflict resulted in ethnic cleansing, including the Sungait, Gugar, Khojalu, and Baku pogroms direct, directed against Armenians. With the dissolution of the Soviet Union in the following year, the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh was declared. A referendum and an election in December indicated pop uh, popular uh, support of independence and the Republic's independence was officially proclaimed in the first days of 1992, though so it went unrecognized by the international community. The full-scale <coughs> conflict between Armenia in Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan was temporarily held by a 1994 ceasefire, which, though periodically violated, largely managed to hold until uh, 27 September in 2020. 2020. The conflict began with an Azerbaijan ground offensive, which included armored formations supported by artillery and drones. During the war, the blood donation became a crucial way to support the healthcare system and provide patients with blood. A significant number of people immediately volunteered to donate blood. However, the blood transfusion depend, uh, department was not um, uh, was unable to collect such a large vol volume, and the World Hospital staff joined in. Uh, for several days, the entire medical team uh, collected uh, blood until they successfully managed to control the influx of donors. Uh, various individuals, <clears throat> both uh, eligible and contraindicated, uh, came forward. Uh, I remember a 70-year-old boy who tried to uh, convince uh, us to donate blood, uh, as it was the only way he could help his friends in military service. <clears throat> it is not worthy that there was no shortage of blood during the war, thanks to the effective organization of our staff. Uh, let's not forget about the COVID pandemic at that time. Uh, during the war, cases of COVID-19 significantly increased as uh, depicted in the diagram. And uh, this period recorded uh, the highest rate of active uh, COVID-19 cases. The war and COVID together caused difficulties not only in our hospital, but also in the entire country. First, there was a shortage of doctors, especially critical care specialists and sergeants. At one point, there was no pediatric rheumatologists in our centers. Uh, in our center. What about pediatric sergeants? They were all located in the central military hospitals. As a result, some operations had to be postponed. The second challenge was the shortage of medicines. Due to the war, roads were often closed and the demand for medicine was high. Chemotherapy courses had to be postponed uh, occasionally due to uh, medication shortage, but fortunately not for uh, extended periods. At that time, as I was working in pharmacy too, and uh, certain medication as antibiotic, antibiotics 
uh, pain relievers and medical supplies, bandages, earrings were in a short supply. We received only a small amount and they sold out very quickly. During the war, I received a call for conspiration. As soon as we showed up, it turned out that our group consists of uh, pediatric oncologist, me, a microsurgeon, maxillofacial uh, surgeon, and nurses. The other two doctors had over 10 years of experiment, experience. Um, and when the group uh, came together, we set off. As we entered Karabakh, what we saw in the media became a reality. Shots, uh, shots and explosions were heard everywhere. Roads and bridges were destroyed in some areas. We passed through abandoned and ruined settlements. When it came dark, burning forces, uh, forests were easily visible. We finally arrived uh, at our location and it turned out that we had to wait for some time uh, before being attached to our military units. Since the medical staff was busy with the transportation of, of wounded, uh, soldiers, we organized a medical assistance for the soldiers in our location. Uh, we, as we had medical supplies and medicine, and it was not difficult to organize it. Uh, we had at that time we had uh, different patients and from the front line, from the deployment site, and even from the hospitals. <clears throat> War ended on November 9. After some, day we ret some days, we returned home. But the war and difficulties uh, did not end there. Uh, the, lack of medicine, uh, uh, the lack of medicines, uh, medical care, and uh, finances uh, were being. However, thanks to the support of benefactors and foundation, these challenges were soon over overcome. Just when it seemed that all difficulties had been overcome, new challenges arose. Uh, here in the map, you can see uh, the Nagorno-Karabakh area before, and uh, this is after war. As uh, Nagorno-Karabakh uh, lost a lot of areas and contacts ways with Armenia, that was easy to blockade. Later, the blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh began, leaving more than hundreds of thousands of people and around 40,000 children uh, stayed without food, medicine, and medical care for over a year. Only through the intervention of the Red Cross from time to time, it was possible to transfer cri uh, critically patients to Armenia. <clears throat> uh, the forced dissolution of Nagorno-Karabakh in September 2023 turned these people into refugees. Additionally, we had patients from Harabakh in our department who are uh, on this list. Uh, we all uh, are fighting for human life against diseases, against cancer, using all available abilities. However, however there come a time when all possibilities are exhausted. We need to openly ad address difficulties, situations in order to avoid and resolve them. For us as medical uh, specialists, a captain in indifference could be viewed and uh, a betrayal of the lofty human values that people and patients ex ex expect from us. <clears throat> 